I'd like a room. Ah, yeah, but that's a bit awkward, I'm afraid. You have a vacancy sign. I, I should have taken that down last night. Yes, but you didn't. It, you see, the landlady's gone away. Her sister's had an accident, and now I'm all alone here. Well, does that make any difference? I can't just walk around all day. I hear what I suppose well, you better come in. I'll take that. How long for? I don't know. Oh, look, there won't be any meals. I might could boil an egg or make a hot drink. Fine, but... fine. Could I see the room? Yeah, yes, of course. Would you like you? No, perhaps I'd better leave the way. Oh, in case you get lost, that's where to ask for. You're down here a bit early, aren't you? Is that the only phone? Yeah. Our bathroom's in there. God, it's cold. Yeah, huh? yeah, it's just a bit. I'll get you some shillings. Oh, and sixpences for the phone. Yeah. How many do you want? Oh, um, five shillings, ten sixpences. Do you know Brighton? Who's in here last? An ex solicitor about a couple of weeks ago. It's very early in the season, you know, you won't find much going on. Thanks. I'll get your front door key. There's nobody else here? No. Well, I did tell you. Oh, by the way, it's 20, 26 and... Well, say something. I know it's you. Please. Please, talk to me. 21, here the door. In case you need it. <laughs> uh, I've got to go out now. If anybody calls, I'll be about an hour. I'm sorry, I had to hang up. For God's sake, Chris, say something. Look, don't leave it all to me. It isn't all my fault. You... Chris? Yes? No, he's gone out. Sorry. Yes. I'll tell him. Do you want to give building another go? I don't mind. We'll give you any ideas. Right, stops and company builders, merchants. You can begin on Monday. It's all a bit pointless, though, isn't it? Now, look, don't give me that marker. One bloody job goes sour on you. Is that the end of the world? There was an ad in last night's paper. Ambulance attendant. Won't they expect some first aid? Well, so it said. 
Right, I'll make some inquiries. Meanwhile, you better sign on at the Labour. Well, things aren't that desperate. Well, it's up to you. You are entitled to it. Mm. Might even do you some good. How do you mean? Well, see the company you're in. Well, you better find yourself somewhere else to live while you're at it. Why? Well, you can't stay with Mrs. Mortimer all summer. Oh, why not? High season's when she makes her living. She only helps us out during the off-season. Ah, oh, never thought of that. It's time you did. Look, what are you going to do with yourself, Mark? Well, I thought uh, when you're finished with me, I'll probably set up on my own again. Inquiry agent? Well, it's what I know best. Why not try to find yourself a partner? Partner? Why? Someone with more business sense. Uh, anybody with any business sense would, wouldn't want me in the first place. You sell yourself too short. Well, uh, it's not all that straightforward. Come on, what were you going to say? Well, often, the big chunks of money, well, not often because they don't happen that often, but when they do, it could be for something quite trivial. I mean, a couple of hundred quid for finding out who's stealing in a factory, what, two days' work. And then you can spend a week or more putting the whole world straight for somebody for a tenner, because that's all they can afford. Marker, I'm no psychologist. I'm, I'm not clever enough. But has it ever occurred to you that other people's problems are attractive because they prevent you thinking about your own? Don't they? Sitting behind this desk, you know, gives one a false sense of security. Makes you forget sometimes just how vulnerable you are. Happens to me often. When does it really? <laughs> I go home some evenings feeling a little full of myself, chest out, chin up. My wife's got a delightful habit of greeting me as we Mr. Fix-It. It's amazing how effective it is. No comment. Right, the first thing is to lick this job problem. If you get any ideas, call me. I'll do the same. And we'll meet, uh, shall we say, Friday week? Friday week. Sorry I had to postpone yesterday. Oh, it's all right. Oh, bye-bye. Mm. Oh, uh, about the new digs. I'm leaving that to you.
And some milk out here if you want it. Now I'll leave it by the door. Do you think you could turn it down a bit? Hello? Hello? You sleep? You all right? Hey, wake up. Miss! No, miss, wake up! Come on, wake up. Wake up, please, now wake up. Wake up. Breathe in. Breathe in. Oh, come on, wake up. Come on, wake up! Oh, please! Wake up! That's it. That's it, wake up. Wake up. Breathe. Come on, breathe. Right down. Breathe more, more, more. Nah. Come and drink this. Oh, no, drink it! Oh, come on, swallow! Oh, all right, then. On your feet. Come on, up. Up! Oh, no! Up! Come on, walk! 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 Come on, walk! Now, 
What's your name? Come on, what's your name? Tell me your name. Sure. Can't hear. Again. Sure. Again. Sure. Louder. Sure. All right then, Shirley, you're going for a walk. Sleep. Yes, you can sleep. But first, you're going for a walk. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again. No. No, again. No, not but, again. Do you know any French? Some. All right, then do it in French. Um, the... But in French. Come on. Again, in French. No. Come on. Yes. No. Come on. No. Come on. Um the Six, seven, seven's a forty-two. Seven, seven's a forty-nine. Nine. And what happened to eight? Eight, seven's a fifty-six. Fifty-six. Oh, not anymore. Yes, come on, come on. Eight. Eight sevens of. I must sit down. That, no, you don't. Come on. I don't want to be here. Uh, no, I'm sure you don't. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, poor doggy. Hasn't had a bite all night. Here we are. Now chew it carefully. Look, you realize it's my money you're throwing away. Hey. Come on. Someone should write to the RS. Yeah. Do you think they're all sick after bank holidays, like animals at the zoo? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but laugh, what's wrong with you? Them, down there. What are they looking at? Us. Why? One bare foot, one in shirt sleeves, three o'clock in the morning and as cold as Christmas. Wave to him. Blow him a kiss. What? You heard. Why? But just do it. Go on. Mm. Let's get back. What is it? Black coffee. Oh. Mm. Well, go and drink it. You need something. You'll have a head like a drum in the morning. Why wait for the morning? <laughs> now, all of it. I must have hit something. Could you close it? You better left out. Spartan. Well, do me a favor, pass that. Chris? Swaps.
Shirley. Shirley, you all right? I once had a record you'd have loved. Oh, yeah, what was that? Black coffee. Oh, this happens to be hot soup. Oh. How's your head? Bad as you promised. Hmm. You forgot the croutons. No, no, I pepper and salted it. <laughs> croutons, not cruets, little bits of fried bread. Not in my cooker book, I'm sorry. Well, who did you think you were getting at? Chris? Oh, that's better. At least you owe me an explanation. Why come here and do it? Why not just walk off the end of the pier? I'm sorry. But you don't sound it. It's good soup. Oh. You're not a priest, are you? No. You've got just the face for it. I can see you leaning out of a pulpit, the wrath of God perched on your left shoulder. Why did you do it? Could you pull the curtain a bit? Why? Why not? It's my life. It's my decision. It's the one uniquely human act, suicide. Oh, is it? Is it really? Well, never heard of a cow milking itself to death or a horse gassing itself, have you? And what sort of trouble is it? You don't want to hear about it. And do you think you owe it to me? Why? Nobody cares whether I'm alive or dead. Well, who do you think cares whether I'm alive or dead? And what about Chris? Married. Oh, that sort of trouble, I see. You don't, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't it? It's so easy. You open up a dozen or so spantials, you add water. Alcohol's better. Drowsy in half an hour. Sleep in one, gone in six to ten. That's a professional estimate. No, thanks. Oh, no. You're too busy, soup maker. Midnight coffee parties, walking strange girls' odd hours. I'm sorry, I can't eat anymore. It was very good. Could you pass that? It's a bit battle scarred. Like me. Oh, thank you. Ah, last time I saw one of those was round a decanter in the lanes. That's where we got it. Chris gave it to me. Yeah, why sherry? But why not port or whiskey? Sherry, or... sherry. Oh! God, I'm tired. Ah, yes, well, you went for a walk, didn't you? <laughs> We make a great couple, don't we? We should have a party and invite all our friends. There'd still be just the two of us. Yeah. 
You better get some more sleep. I think I'll have to. Excuse me. Get it. If it's a patient, tell them I've left the country. It's a gentleman to see you. Good morning. Uh, Dr. Norse, Dr. C.I. Norse. Yes. Is this a professional matter? Uh, well, no, but could I have two minutes with you alone, please? <laughs> You've something to say. Say it to both of us. Well, I would rather speak or to you alone. come to my surgery. I believe you know a girl called Shirley Marlowe. That's correct. Uh, we both do. It, well, you might be interested to know that she tried to commit suicide last night. No. Yes. Uh, presumably she failed. Oh, yes. A bid to win attention. It's common enough. This was a bid to do nothing except kill herself. If her radio hadn't been on and if I hadn't heard it just before ah, I was you did. <laughs> Why do you think she left it on? I tell you, if she were going to drown herself, she'd blow a kiss to the lifeguard as she walked past. She's like that, isn't she? Yes. Well, say it with a little more conviction, dear. She's an odd girl. Very odd. She tried to telephone you yesterday. Really? I was out most of the day. And most well, of the day. Well, couldn't you at least have spoken to her? I wasn't here. Didn't you tell your husband? No. You see? Half a dozen phone calls from a girl desperate enough to try and kill herself and you couldn't say a word? And this is a doctor's house? OK. There endeth the lesson. Let's leave it at that. My wife was ill. Shirley came to nurse her. Her job's done. She's gone. When did she leave? Yesterday morning. Only yesterday morning? We told you she's a strange girl. You want a message for her? I'll give you one. Tell her, as it seems unlikely there's any afterlife, it's plain bloody stupid not to hang on to this one. I'll tell her. Just in case you want to speak to her, either of you. That's her number. Mm. How... how did she...? What method? Pills. Probably from your drugs cabinet. Well, is that all? Yes. Fine. I'll show our friend out. I run my bath, will you, Chris? How's your head? Oh, like a drum, but the big parade's over. Why? Oh. Sunday morning, sun shining, money in my pocket. Why not? Oh. oh, thank you. It's a long time since anyone bought me flowers. No, 
nice walk. Mm, yeah, very pleasant. What did they say? Who? Oh. The Norses. My bookmark, I missed it. Page 140. Well, what do you expect? They're very upset. So what time are they coming? Grapes and get well cards. Tell you what, we'll invite them to our party. Guests of honour. How do they look? Oh, terrific. Where did you learn to do that? <laughs> the big table. Centre of the ward. We learn how to eke them out a bit. Yeah? Lovely. When did you take up private nursing? Two years ago. You like it? Hate it. Why? Go into someone's home. You get fond of people. You put down roots. And then it's time to go. What did you think of Chris? He seemed nice enough. Mind you, I think it was his wife who was more upset. Well, you know, being a doctor, I expect he's immune to this sort of thing. She was upset? Oh, yeah. Not just putting it on? Oh, no, no, it was genuine. He didn't understand. Hey, if I gave you some money, would you go out and buy a bottle of Chianti? Yeah, but why Chianti? Well, why not? It's Italian, gay, lively, sunny. Well, I may have to search around a bit. It is Sunday morning, you know. Doesn't matter. There's no hurry. Then we can eat. Fine. Fine. I'll be as quick as I can. Sherry. Oh, my dear, are you all right? I've been so worried. I... Shirley, listen, stop calling. Get off this phone and stop off it. We don't want to hear from you, either of us. From you, about you, anything. Understand? And next time, next time, make sure you turn off the radio first. wrong. But it had to stop. Be reasonable. We couldn't go on like that. Where the hell would it end? Where will it end like this? Oh, don't be silly. You, you, you know better than that. You either talk about it or you do it. She's a talker. Now, please, let's forget about it.
Now, how was she? Concussed, but no fracture. She'll be all right. Good. And you? Fine, fine. What's the smell? Uh, disinfectant. Not that drain again? No, no. Oh, either I stop wearing heels or I must wear them more often. What? No taxes? Oh, I thought the walk would do me good. How'd it go with Hull? Yeah, how does it always go, slowly? Anything happen? Yes. You left your diamond ring in the kitchen. Like some tea? Uh, yes, I'll do it. Stay with you. Know where everything is? Uh. <laughs> I'll just go and put my things away. Yeah, put in the kettle on. Still on your diet? Of course. Okay? Hmm? Tea? Oh, yeah. Fine. I'll be out by next Friday. What? I'm looking for new jigs. Why? What's wrong with these? I know about Hull said you make more money out of a holiday maker, you know, full board and all that. Hull's a probation officer. What does he know about lodgings? Well, anyway, I'll be up by next weekend. Frank, I don't want you to go. I'd rather you stayed. You sure? It's nice to have someone you can talk to. <coughs> Look, what's this got to do with her? How did you know? I rang to see if everything was all right. She answered it, said you were out. She didn't tell me. It didn't sound as though she would. Who was she, anyway? Turned up on the doorstep, crack of dawn, picking for a room. I put her into Enright's old room. The next thing you know, she tries to kill herself. How? Pills. You called an ambulance? Well, no. Why not? I thought I could cope. Why? Well, what do you mean, why? Try to cope. But I thought I was helping her, protecting her. Oh, you fool. Out on parole and you get yourself mixed up in a thing like this, you're mad. Hey, but what about her parents, her relatives, all her friends? What about them? I suppose she'd been your daughter. Oh, I'd have bloody sight sooner she were in hospital than patched up by some amateur. Oh, thanks. Oh. Reasonable, Frank. Where's she now? She just walked out. Where? God, how the hell do I know? Oh, there you are! And how the hell do you know she's in another little room taking another overdose? Well, that's what I've been wondering. Do you think so? Well, I don't know. Oh, love, you've taken on too much. Leave it to the experts, the professionals. A psychiatrist can probably straighten her out in a couple of sessions. Look, not asking for help for yourself is one thing, but when it's somebody else's neck... All right. So I made a miss. A young girl with a big emotional problem and me trying to sort it out. <laughs> we missed to fix it. Perhaps I've been making botch-ups all this time. This is the first one ever came home to roost. Go on. See 
Oh, no, I'm afraid you're too late. Oh, my God. Oh, no, I didn't mean that way. Then she's gone. Oh, gone where? I don't know. Can I come in? All right. Would you like to come in here? Why, um, Why did, did you leave here? Well, I don't know, don't you? But what happened? Did, did she telephone you again? Or what did you say? It, it wasn't me. Or what did he say? I, I don't remember exactly. But the gist of it? Leave us alone. Is that all? Then there must have been something more than that. Turn off the radio next time. What a bastard. What have you two got against her? I mean, why didn't you finish her off while she was with you? Please. Oh, no, please, please and... nothing. I mean, he's supposed to be a doctor. I don't understand you people. And you must have encouraged her. Never. Well, you must have. No. Well, you must have said something. You must have done no. something. Well, even without meaning to. There was nothing, I swear it. You gave her the bracelet. That was a little present, a joke. Yeah, all right, so it was a joke that she misinterpreted. You're kind to her, you take an interest in her, she gets the wrong idea. Because perhaps she's confused or she's lonely, I don't know, but couldn't you see that? Yes, but you don't Look, understand. What happened yesterday morning? I was in my bath and, and she came in just to talk to me. And then Charles came home and throw, threw her out, just like that. You tell your husband that if she does kill herself, he'll be responsible. He meant you. Feel better for that? No. Nope. Weren't very fair, were you? Well, they weren't very fair. She was only trying to put things right. It'll be too late. I mean, imagine walking around with that ticking away in your mind. Turn off the radio first. I'm going to look for her. What? Well, I can't just do nothing. And where are you going to well, look? I don't know. I'll yes. Go. I'll go to the station. I'll tell the police. The police? And what are you going to tell them? That there may be a girl who may be contemplating suicide. Don't you think you've done enough? I can't just leave it. I must do something. All right. I'll get my coat. Eight five one nine five seven. Hello. Yes, I'll fetch him. No, he's just here. All right. Of course I will. Yes. I'll tell him. Are you sure you... I've no idea how long I'll be Save your legs. Why, what's the matter? That was your girlfriend. Well, On the phone. Where is she? What did she, she say? She couldn't wait. She had to catch your train. She was at the station. Well, what did she say? To thank you very much for everything. And one day she'll drop in for some more soup, but next time she'll make the croutons. Is that all? Doesn't make sense. <laughs> yes, it makes sense. 